Hello everyone, my name is Gamer Boss Plays! And nine years ago today, I created my YouTube channel. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? What's up? Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Ho ho ho! Feels good to do that again, man. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you all are doing absolutely fantastic. It has been nine years since I've created my YouTube channel. On August 29th, 2015, I created my channel. And it is now August 30th of 2024. I was a day late again. Hey, look, I was super busy yesterday. I, I, it's been, there's been a lot going on, I'll, I'll get to that, and, uh, look, I, I was a mess, I, I wasn't presentable, and I just, I just, I got home at, like, 9 p.m., just please, please. So I'm recording it the next day, I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Anyway, here we are. It, it, it's really wild to think like it's already the ninth year. It, it's strange. The last year between the two videos, which by the way, I did record an eight year video. I know it's not public, but it's it's out there. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's crazy how much quicker this year I think went by compared to any of the rest of them. Like feasibly, like it's very much so this one feels the strangest. Maybe it's because I recorded the I'm back video just a few months ago and so I feel kind of like like I'm just making that video again. I don't know, but here we are nonetheless. So to clarify, yes, there is an eight year ago today video that does exist and it is now unlisted in my channel anniversaries playlist. Okay, so if you want to see that video, it is there, it exists. Uh, the reason I didn't make it public last year is because I'm not super fond of everything I said that year and I wanted it to be a bigger video because I hadn't uploaded in a while as you guys know and so I, I just got really imposter syndrome about it and I never posted it and then after it was like a few days after I was just like ah, I don't I feel too insecure to post this a few days late so uh, I didn't but it is there now if you guys want to know what I was thinking and saying uh, in the eight years ago today video but here we are Nine years, a year till 10. Um, I'm 17 now, um, and this implies that I will be 18 in just a few months. I'm almost an adult man. I'm now in college. I'm now in college? I started this channel in elementary school. I'm in college. I'm an old hag, okay? My hair is longer. I haven't had a haircut in since literally two weeks before the six years ago today video. That was the last time I had a haircut. So look at these locks. They almost don't fit in the frame. They're so long and luscious. <laughs> <laughs> My dog is still around. She just turned four. Look at my baby. Roxy. 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 Sleepy, sleepy, sleepy little baby. She's my baby. I love her. And yeah, I'm in a very interesting transitionary period right now. So as you guys know, uh, the last year I did finally come back to YouTube um, after the last couple years where I, I didn't do a lot. It was a very stressful time in my life um, and I felt like uh, my focus needed to be on getting myself personally antiquated to my surroundings and also I spent a lot of time filming stuff but not necessarily editing it and finally getting it out because I had a lot of other projects I was being dialed into. Simply put, I was finding my creative process and finding my way on all that uh, over the last couple years and finally started to get some of that stuff out to you guys over the last month and a half or so. Obviously, it hasn't been every single week, like I said. The summer had a pretty large bump in the middle of it. July in particular was a little bit of a crazy month, but here we are at the end of it. Finally got another video out last week and I have this video coming out today, yeah! So yeah, I still have a lot of videos that I am currently working on that I'm hopefully gonna be getting out to you guys soon. I have no intention of stopping or quitting again. It's just not gonna be as consistent necessarily. Obviously, doing it every week is tough, I'm now in college and I'm actively still working my job and I'm working on some side hobbies and projects that will be videos hopefully down the line as well as trying to still spend time with friends, live my life, all that jazz. But I am actively working on projects. Um, I've been doing songwriting. I've been trying to get to local events and, and do stuff like that. And essentially, just instead of trying to do a million different ideas with film, I'm also trying to do a million different hobbies and, and, and find other little kinks and things that I enjoy. And I hope to show some of you guys uh, some of that stuff 
uh, in the near future as well. But anywho, nine years on YouTube. In these anniversary videos, something I've tried to keep consistent in them, and a couple of years I've fallen a little short, is talking about YouTube. Obviously this is something I've done for a very, very long time. And while of course my intentions have been very, very different throughout each different era, I've had this channel nine years. That is over half my life. And very much so, for a youth, that's pretty much my whole life of being like conscious. So it means a lot to me. And I've made it very clear how much it means to me. But I always enjoy the opportunity to talk about what it means to me now, if that makes sense. As of right now, YouTube is a very strange place to be. A lot of my time in the last year, and in particular note, a big focus of my recent film, The Artist Dichotomy was about, is the morality of, is it okay to, to be a filmmaker and to be an artist? Is that correct? Because I'm a guy who I'm super passionate about art and artistic expression, because I think that's where you can find the most honesty and genuinity about something I truly care about, the human condition. But at the same time, when you're making a film and you're editing it and you're making a narrative and you're piecing together lighting and sound and, and writing and actors and all these things, it also makes me sit back and be like, this is the most fabricated, fakest form of honesty there is, and yet it makes me feel the most strongly understanding of the world around me and the people and the emotions and, and all that is of, of life. I've always thought that's a really interesting dichotomy, hence the film's name, but also hence my reflection on the philosophy of storytelling, of making videos, and the current atmosphere of what YouTube and streaming and filmmaking is. Obviously, it's no catch to say that Hollywood is a really bleh, agonizing industry <laughs> with a lot of fabrication and upsetting stuff going on. There's no disregarding how AI is out there and it is making the scenes and being talked about so heavily. Well, I don't think it's gonna really, really be as effective as some people think. At the same time, it's very much so a prevalent problem and I think on the smaller scale of people, like more of the accessible types of filmmaking and storytelling like on YouTube, it is a big problem and I do think it's gonna get in the way of a lot of independent filmmaking out there. And in the industry, obviously it's had its effects and it's kind of nerve wracking to think about. Also, in the last few months, the stuff that's gone on with the Mr. Beast drama and in general, somehow even the larger rise of cancel culture of just all these public figures being condemned for doing some pretty horrific things coming out constantly, almost leading me as a consumer of YouTube to sit back and be almost untrustworthy of all these figures that for years and years I've watched and looked up to and been inspired by and stuff I've made come out to be people who have done some pretty deplorable stuff. And that's upsetting and that's hard and that's difficult to wrap your head around. And all in all, it's led me over the last couple years to slowly but surely drift away from a lot of social media. The last couple months, I have been constantly uninstalling YouTube, trying really hard to be on the application less. Not just because of what I've just mentioned, but also because in my personal life and staying motivated and, and maintaining kind of proper time management and doing what I'm trying to do, it can be difficult. I think when YouTube's right there and it's so easy to get in the mindset of, oh, I'm gonna watch videos and I'm gonna do research, then five hours goes by and only like a couple of those videos were actually beneficial to what I was working on or half of it was just drama related and, and I realize how detrimental that is to my health and to so many others' health, especially when we're already in the midst of a very divisive season of life for so many people. All in all, it's made me look at YouTube, maybe look at the state of filmmaking and all these things, and maybe a bit pessimistically, be a little bit concerned for the validity of wanting to be an artist nowadays. Is it accessible? Is it realistic that that can become an occupation, something that's sustainable nowadays? Or is that really just meant for a lucky few? And is it just gonna turn into a corporation, a sponsorship game, an industry? Is YouTube just another Hollywood? And that's where I've been left. It's a big part, I think, too, why it took me a little while to get back on YouTube, but also a big reason why I did come back. Because, damn it, I wanna make whatever the flip I want. I wanna post whatever I want, and I didn't wanna care about subscribers or views or any of that 
like I used to many years back when I was a lot younger and naive and thought that's all that mattered with doing this YouTube thing is getting some sort of fame out of it. I'm at the point now where my last three videos, two of them were 10 out of 10s and I could give two shits. Those couple comments I got, even if they were only just a couple, meant the world to me. And it's so lovely to get to respond to those few things that people have to say and have those little interactions and engagements. It means the universe to me. And I don't want to sit here and be jealous that there's not more eyes being on my stuff. At the end of the day, I'm making stuff because, hey, I love doing it. And if somebody else finds it and they love it, fantastic for them. Hopefully they found something lovely and uh, I still get to love what I'm doing too. That's a wonderful thing. And I think it's much better than getting in the mindset of the industrialization, obsessing over the algorithm and looking at almost the dystopian that has become the YouTube landscape in so many ways. I do think with the stuff going on, with the exposures of Mr. Beast and, and all the drama culture, I think in some ways it's dividing YouTube um, in possibly a positive way to where on one hand there's going to be the drama frogs, there's going to be all the people who are there to treat YouTube like a news platform, but then it's also separating the real artists, the people who really care about this platform, the people who want to make good stuff and bring back that old YouTube. I think they're also getting their voice back a little bit too. And that's kind of what I'm hoping is to jump into that side of the platform maybe have a chance and see how this YouTube thing goes again. It's also been fun getting to make thumbnails. Uh, I took graphic design this last year and it's been fun to key into that and have it outside of a school thing, but more so of a fulfilling fun thing. I'm excited to make movie posters for the movies I've already done and for the future films I have on the way and really bring together the whole skill set and knowledges that I have built up over the last couple of years to what I'm doing here. I want this spot to essentially be a resume <laughs> That's what I hope YouTube can be, but not just a resume for people and for opportunities down the line, but just simply put, because connection, that is my ultimate goal with what I do. The opportunity to build connection is so plausible, and I'm very, very excited about more of those opportunities coming down the line, especially now that I am in college, and I'm in a film class, and I'm meeting some other people who are into the same thing I'm into. It's still the first couple weeks, so I haven't made a bunch of social connections, but we'll see how it goes, and hopefully get to see some more stuff with some friends of mine uh, down the line. So yeah, YouTube, there is that. And there is my philosophy in modern day about it, how I've reflected on all of it and how it affects me now. So we put, YouTube is not the same as it was and I sit very differently with it, but I still think it's a beautiful platform, a beautiful opportunity, and I'm never, never gonna let this thing go. So that leads me to what I have to say every year. Thanks. Thanks to the ones who have stuck around and are still watching, like Caspery and Chalky, um, Velocity, and a few other people who have been watching me since 2017 who still would pop into those streams and a couple of them I'm still on speaking terms with. Thanks so much for sticking around and for watching the new stuff I'm putting out, giving it a chance. I know it's not all gaming stuff that I'm doing now. Accurate Rewind is still on the way, don't worry. But thank you for being at this transitionary point when I move on from gamer boss plays and being a kid who's just gaming and having fun to being an artist and somebody who's trying to make more fulfilling, stronger minded stuff, but still at the end of the day, just having fun. I'm, I'm very grateful for the support and, and all that you guys are giving me. And I'm excited to see the future of this channel and see where it rolls and see where my life rolls and how it dives into what I put out on here. It's very exciting, very fulfilling. I'm so grateful to still have it. <laughs> it's really, really cool. So thank you. Thank you so much for nine years of Gamer Boss Plays and now nine years of Gabriel Silfon. I mean, can't wait to see you guys for 10 years. Can't wait to continue to bring you some lovely stuff. And yeah, catch you later. <laughs>
you learn to let it go and only use it to be a fulfilling point of communication and for expression. <laughs> Promise you, it'll be so fulfilling. And yeah, it's a lot harder to do it when you're the one person doing it and the whole world's having a hard time adapting to it. You stop looking at your phone, everybody else isn't gonna stop. You're still gonna see a lot of heads down, but all in all, it'll be fulfilling in the long run. Something I've had to learn and hey, it's a big reason why I've been able to come back and do this whole thing again. So take that as you will. I love you guys. I love, I love YouTube. I love filming. I love Joel Haver. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces. <laughs> ah. Goodness, who is it? Who is it? My pretty girl. Maxie! Hello! Okay, bye.